Hi everyone. So far when we've been talking about scaling an object, we've been talking about scaling the dimensions. So if I wanted to scale this cube, for example, this is a two by two by two cube. So two um, on all sides. And if I wanted to scale this by like a factor of three, what you would do is you'd multiply all of the dimensions, the length, the width, the height by two. So if I wanted to scale by a factor of three, the length would be two times three, which would be six. And since it's cube, all sides would be the same. Okay, so, so far we've been talking about scaling dimensions. So now this cube has become three times the size. Instead of a two by two by two, it's a six by six by six. What I want to focus on today is if you scale the dimensions, what is going to happen to the perimeter? What is going to happen to the area? And as a bonus, we're also going to talk about what's going to happen to the volume if it's a 3D shape. Okay, so with that said, what I want you to do is I'm going to have you pause the video, and I want you to just determine the dimensions, what we've already done. So I want you to go through and say, okay, if the scale factor is 1, what are the new dimensions of the cube? You do the same for 2, 4, a half, a fourth, and z is just a variable. So if I scale it by z, what would the new dimensions be? Um, that'll be the last one. So basically you're completing column 1. Pause the video, go ahead and do that on your own. Okay, so we started with a 2 by 2 by 2 cube. Now, if we scale by different dimensions, what you do when you scale is you're really multiplying it by that scale factor. So if I scale by a factor of 1, all the dimensions are really 2 times 1, which is still 2. So I'd still have a 2 by 2 by 2 cube. So essentially, when you scale something by a factor of 1, you're not changing the size at all, because anything you multiply by 1 is going to be itself. Whereas if you scale by a factor of 2, what that really means is you're doubling the size or doubling the dimensions. Um, 2 times 2 gives you 4. So this would be a 4 by 4 by 4 cube. Okay, we already did scaling by 3. 4 times 4 is 16, so you'd have a 16 by 16 by 16 rectangle. Um, now, 1 half means you're going to take half the size of the rectangle. So if you take half the size of each cube face, or each square, um, then instead of 2, what's half of 2 is going to be 1. So there's two ways to think about this. You can do 2 times the scale factor, which is 1 half, and you get 1. Or multiplying by half is the same thing as dividing by 2. You're taking half the size, divide by 2. So then you get a 1 by 1 by 1 cube. Similarly for 1 fourth, that means you're taking a fourth of the size of the cube. So it was 2 times 1 fourth, which is 1 half, or 0.5, whichever one. You can also think about it as you're dividing by 4. A fourth of the size is either multiply by a fourth or divide by 4. So if you take 2 and divide it into 4 pieces, you'd only have a half. So it's a half by a half by a half. Now, z basically represents any scale factor. So no matter what z is, you're going to take 2 and multiply it by z. So you'd have a 2z by 2z by 2z cube where z can be any number. So it's just a placeholder for like it could be any scale factor. Okay, so that's a review of how to scale an object. You're going to scale the dimensions. Okay, so a 2 by 2 by 2 scaled by 2 would now be a 4 by 4 by 4. That's the length, width, and height. What I want us to do now is figure out what happens when you scale the perimeter, the area, and the volume. So for the perimeter and area, we're going to talk about the base. So the base of the shape is just the flat square here. So you're going to scale this 2 by 2 square. And for the area of the base, I want you to just figure out what would the area of the base be, not the whole shape. Now the volume, you're going to take the volume of the whole cube. So I'll do one example. Um, and then we're going to do this for each new cube we've created. So we're going to do it for the 2 by 2 by 2, the 4 by 4 by 4, the 6 by 6 by 6, so on and so forth. So if you're going to find the perimeter of the base, the base is a 2 by 2 square. That means all the sides would be 2. Perimeter is when you add up all the sides. So 2, 4, 6, 8, the perimeter would be 8. Whereas the area, you would take base times height, which is 2 times 2, which is going to be 4. Okay? And the volume, you would take the area of the base, which is 4, and you're going to multiply it by the height. Now the height of this cube is 2. So really, the volume of the cube would be 2 times 2 times 2, which would be 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, so perimeter again is 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. You add up the sides, 
Area is just length times width or base times height, which is 2 times 2. Volume is area of the base times the height. Now, I want you to go ahead and practice this for the scale by 2, scale by 3, scale by 4, a half, a fourth, and Z. And fill out the rest of this chart, and then I'll come back and we'll figure out, you know, exactly what these relationships mean. Okay, if you're starting this video again, you should have all of the chart filled out. So I started with our original cube. So really, the scale factor 1 means that this whole... Well, here is our original cube, because our dimensions are still 2 by 2 by 2. Now, the perimeter of the base of the original cube is 8, because you add up all the sides. And the area of our original base is 4, and the volume of our original cube is going to be 8. So, this is the row that defines our original shape. And every row after this is giving us dimensions of our shape once it has been scaled. So I'm highlighting this because we are going to compare all the other rows to our original row to see how the scale factor changes for perimeter area and volume. Now let me give you an example. Okay, If we scale by a factor of 2, I want to compare this to our original dimensions. So if we scale by a factor of 2, all the dimensions will be scaled by a factor of 2 and be 4 by 4 by 4. And the perimeter of our original base is 8. But now the perimeter of our new base from our new cube is 16. How does 8 compare to 16? Okay, well we should be thinking, well, 16 is 2 times 8. So to get from 8 to 16, you'd have to multiply it by 2, which is the same scale factor as how we scaled the dimensions. So I'm starting to think that the scale factor also tells me how to scale the perimeter. But let's confirm this by comparing our original to another scaled copy. So again, our original perimeter was 8, but when I scaled the dimensions by 3, well, our perimeter went from 8 to 24. So how does 8 get scaled to 24? What times 8 gives me 24? What number would I have to multiply by? And the answer is 3. 8 times 3 is 24. So to scale the perimeter, I had to scale 8 by 3 to get 24. And is that the same scale factor as my scaling dimensions? Yes, it is. If you wanted to keep proving this, you could keep going. So how would I get from 8 to 32? To get from 8 to 32, you'd have to multiply by 4, which is the same scale factor that we had to multiply the dimensions by. So to kind of formalize this, to scale the perimeter, all you have to do is multiply the original perimeter by the same scale factor. So flip over to the other side. How does scaling the base, or maybe I should say, how does scaling the dimensions of the cube affect the perimeter? Okay, so the mathematical rule is that to scale the perimeter, you take the original perimeter, I'll abbreviate that, and you multiply it by the same scale factor. Now, the verbal explanation is that the scale factor of the dimensions, scale factor of the dimensions is the same as the scale factor for the perimeter. So if you have a rectangle that's like 3 by 2, so your perimeter would be 3 plus 3 is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So your perimeter would be 10. If I wanted to scale the dimensions by 3, that means the perimeter would also get scaled by 3. So the perimeter of the new shape would be 30, because the scale factor of the dimensions is the same as the scale factor of the perimeter. Now you might be saying, well, duh. But let's take a look at area and volume and see if the same thing happens. So my original area of my base is 4. But once I scaled it by 2, my area was now 16. So how do I get from 4 to 16? What's the scale factor? This time I'd have to multiply by 4. And is it the same scale factor as 2? No. The scale factor of the area is not the same scale factor as the dimensions. Now let's look at a couple more to figure out what it might be. What about when I started with 4? I scaled the dimensions by 3, and now the area is 36. How do I get from 4 to 36? You have to multiply by 9. 9 times 4 is 36. And is 9 the same scale factor as 3? 
No. So the scale factor for the area is not the same as the scale factor for the dimensions. So when you scale the dimensions by 2, you scale the area by 4. When you scale the dimensions by 3, you scale the area by 9. What about to go from my original area, which again my original area is 4, to 64? So what would you have to multiply 4 by to get 64? And you'd have to multiply 4 times 16. So while the dimensions get scaled by 4, your area is getting scaled by 16. And I want you to kind of think of a pattern. Like, how does 4 relate to 2? How does 9 relate to 3? How does 16 relate to 4? Like, when, when you're scaling the dimensions, what are you actually scale, scaling the area of? So for perimeter, it was the exact same number. For area, you do not scale by the same scale factor as the dimensions. So to repeat that, my dimensions here got scaled by 2. So we started by a 2 by 2 by 2. Now we have 4 by 4 by 4. But the area went from 4 to 16, which is multiplied by 4. So that scale factor to scale the area is not the same as it is to scale the dimensions. Perimeter is the same, area is not. So what is the scale factor to get from the area? Or the volume. Is the volume the same? So to get from 8 to 64, what would I have to multiply by? Well, 8 times what scale factor will give me 64? The answer is that scale factor is 8. 8 times 8 gives me 64, which is not the same as a scale factor to scale the dimensions. Okay, or if I keep continuing this pattern, what's a scale factor to get from, let's see, 8 to 216? So what would I have to multiply 8 by to get 216? That'll be the scale factor of the volume. Okay, and 8 times 27 will give me 216. So the scale factor of the volume is you'd have to take the original volume and multiply by 27. And I could keep going. Like, what's the scale factor to get from 8 to 512? So 8 times what gives me 512? It would be 64. Okay, so I scaled the dimensions by 4, but I'm scaling the volume by 64. Or I'm scaling the dimensions by 4, but I'm scaling the area by 16. So we see, like, the perimeter has the same scale factor. I'd have to scale this by 4 as well. But the area has a scale factor of 16, and the volume has a scale factor of 64. It's not the same. So what we want to do now is come up with a pattern. So I already did this for perimeter, but can you come up with a general rule? Like, how do I scale the area, and how do I scale the volume if I'm given a scale factor for just the dimensions? I want you to see if you notice a pattern with these numbers, and we will talk about this as a class.